in order to be relevant for the national businesses and companies, you have to be international. We are very happy, Pia, to have you on our Makers and Shapers series. You are the CEO of RISE and you're also the chair of the University Board of KTH. And both organizations are highly respected members of the EIT digital ecosystem. My role as being a CEO of RISE is, uh, is actually has been quite fo a lot of focusing on merging a lot of RTOs, smaller RTOs or groups of RTOs in Sweden the last few years in order to really create a strong actor in the ecosystem of research and innovation in Sweden that we haven't had. So that has been a really interesting journey. And now today we have an RTO with 3,000 employees almost, and we do everything in the technology area uh, and are really focused on creating competitiveness for industry, but also of being an innovative RTO as well. Regarding KTH, of course, it's an honor to be the chair of, of the board of KTH. That this is a really important university of technology in Sweden, or the most important one, I would say, both regarding education, having international students coming to Sweden, being having international cooperation in education, but of course also the excellent research and the excellent researchers that are working at KTH and that are part of, of scientific uh, different scientific arenas and collaborations worldwide and having a lot of partnerships with strong research actors uh, in the whole world. It's a really important university for Sweden and for the competitiveness of Sweden as well, of course. Pia, you mentioned that uh, RISE and KTH are very active actors in the innovation ecosystem, creating new companies. Could you give us a very good example of such a company that was created by those partners in this ecosystem? There are, of course, a lot of examples, but we have one example, which is Ascatron. They have also used the lab at the KTH area, Electrum, a lot in order to to create their products. They are focused on silicon carbide as a material. And they had been struggling for, I think, at least four or five years, just on the edge of being bankrupt, actually. They had to raise new money all the time. And actually they were sold. And Rice was a, a huge um, owner of this, together with some others as well, together with those that actually st started from the beginning with the ID, even though we had an external CEO. Uh, but we sold our share of that and uh, all all the shares we had. And that was a really good business. I, I think it's an excellent example. And I also understand that your model of working with that is take equity. And it's also good to hear that it was really a deep tech company with really high tech in it, the labs of uh, KTH being used. So you can see that Europe is able to build these high tech companies and bring them successfully to the market. I would like to address the specific topic of the role of RTOs and universities where it comes to venture creation, startup creation and growing and acceleration of those companies. The reason is that at first sight, it seems that especially universities and the startup worlds are two fairly different worlds where in the university world, it's about papers, it's about the Hirsch index, it's about conferences, it's about peers, it's about funding. While in the startup world, it's about your minimal viable product, it's about your pitch, it's about an accelerator, it's about getting an investor. So it all looks pretty different. Nevertheless, it are two parts of the same coin of innovation. And how do we now connect those two worlds in a good way? I think there are some common issues for both universities and RTOs. It's also about having an ecosystem where universities, where RTOs, society and business and, co and companies are working together, creating and upholding also creative environments where you, where you have a focus on, on innovation, on entrepreneurship. It's about taking this creative environment into 
concrete solutions that really can be uh, creating new businesses or creating arenas where startups and small and medium cam sized companies can see what can be done together. It's also about how do I really take my research ID into something that can be a business. Spin-offs is one of the core things and also patents. We have a tech transfer office uh, at RISE. We have a lot of spin-offs. We are an owner of the spin-off for a while and then we go back in order to let other owners take care of it uh, after a few years. For RISE as an RTO, our test beds, our tech infrastructure is very important because they are innovation arenas do you feel that universities in Europe have the right incentives in place for the staff to work more on innovation and entrepreneurship? I really fully agree with you, Willem, about regarding that the, the huge incentives for a researcher is actually to publish. And I think that's really specific for the scientific environments uh, in Europe. I think the journey has started to show role models that can be both really, really excellent researchers, but they can also contribute to venture with their research ideas. But I think that at the end of the day, for a researcher, the most important thing is still to be a good researcher. These in incentives have to change. There's a big difference between the US and Europe that there is more private venture money. If you look at how universities and RTOs are financed in Europe by the governments or by kind of uh, doing paid work for uh, industry, um, where is the room that universities and RTOs have to take risk with investment money to really indeed do the early investments to create new companies, especially in Europe, the creation of new digital companies is lagging behind. This um, sort of shift in focus of what is expected from universities hasn't been for, on the agenda for such a long time. So I would say that the, the sort of the DNA of a university isn't actually to take research results into companies. So I think that's really about the culture of university but then you have also very, very structural things. And I would say that financing and funding is one of the most important ones. KTH Innovation that is taking care of the ideas, research ideas that could come up to business, new businesses. They are almost always uh, underfinanced. And uh, you really have to bring in uh, support from other actors as well. I would say that universities need more of support and prerequisites in order to be able to take this mission. And it's pretty much the same for RTOs. We are allowed to start companies, we're allowed to earn money, which makes it easier for us, but not easy. <laughs> because we still have to be, be in a structure where we can get funding from others or financing from others. I want to briefly discuss the role of the government here because RTOs, universities, are public institutions. They are mainly financed by the government. At the same time, you see governments increasingly putting requirements on universities and RTOs to generate income. Mm. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's a tricky one. I think that uh, I think government really have a responsibility with not just giving uh, creating new missions and then say you have to do this as well and you have to do that and and you don't get the, the prerequisites to actually do it. The things that you expect from universities and RTOs have to go hand in hand with the possibility to actually deliver on that. Also having a responsibility on universities and RTOs to also work with other actors that already today are putting funding into startups and that have sort of venture as their core business because you don't have to invent everything yourself either. So I think it's, it's really about a balance. But today I would say that the expectations are higher than the prerequisites that you have. Europe just launched its new research and innovation program, Horizon Europe. Mm -hmm. There is more emphasis on innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, there was already the EIT, now there is also the EIC, and there is really a whole pillar uh, devoted uh, there. Also, there is a tighter coupling to the strategic priorities of the Commission being green and digital. Mm -hmm. 
if you look at RISE or if you look at KTH, what's your view on Horizon Europe? Mm -hmm. Does it bring the right incentives? Where should it be strengthened? I think it's really important to be in these environments, both for actually bringing in knowledge into those and to set a good agenda. And from a rights perspective, it's re regarding an industry agenda where you have an innovative sort of issue coming into that more than has been done before. Because I think Europe overall has to be more strategic because uh, the competition is increasing very, very fast. And I think it's good that, we, they have, that the focus has been settled down to, to green and digital. We want to have the networks, we can contribute, but we can also get a lot of things back. I think that Sweden overall should have be more active than we've been in the former program. I think that one of the, uh, the challenges regarding Horizon Europe that you get programs that are horizontal between these different initiatives because otherwise you will do research there and you will do innovation somewhere else. The European research area, it's a lot about exchange, uh, collaboration, getting foreign students to the universities. KTH is very active there yeah. and they are also yeah. a very active uh, participant in our international master school that we have rolled out as EIT Digital together with KTH and 20 other universities in Europe. If I now look at the RTOs, it seems to me that RTOs are, are still quite nationally oriented. It means every country has its RTO. There's RISE, there's VTT, there's Fraunhofer, there is uh, TNO. Do you think it will also open up a kind of single market for RTOs? I think it has to happen and it's happening also. Overall RTOs in, in Europe are co collaboration through, through YARTO. Uh, but that is normally through in policy issues and things like that. But we are also creating, often bilaterally, but also in, in larger clusters, um, collaboration agreements where we see in what areas could we together do more than we do ourselves. And that is actually about get, reaching out to new customers and companies in other countries. We can take, for example, the bioeconomy area, which Finland and Sweden are really... That's, uh, that's part of our core, really, because we have so much forest. Uh, but you don't see that in the rest of Europe. So, of course, RICE and VTT are working together in this. There's something in your question that I have to admit that you're right, that almost all RTOs have a mission of creating or, or increasing competitiveness in your specific country. So there's really a national perspective. But I think that in order to be relevant for the national businesses and companies, you have to be international. Here in Sweden, we are really opening up now for doing more of international affairs, more of international collaboration. Pia, I really want to thank you for being with us today. I really want to thank you for sharing your insights and your opinions on the development of innovation in Sweden, but also in Europe. And of course, the role of RTOs and universities in that. Thanks for your contribution to our Makers and Shapers series. Thank you so much. It's been interesting discussions and I hope we'll meet again in the future to discuss more about how we can really meet the challenges together in order to find new good solutions and new companies that can grow uh, to create more competition for Europe.